next thing in my pack. Um, these are my squirrel stubs. And y'all thought this was just because I was an alcoholic. This is actually my sense of scale. So you can see, your standard drinking glass, old fashioned drinking glass. There's your squirrel stubs. And this weighs about a pound and four ounces if I remember correctly. Three quarter inch squirrel steps on an OCB buckle wrapped in back wrap. This is the be all end all ring of steps. There is nothing better. Um, this is superior to the Bullman's. This is superior to the Amara steps. This is superior to me. No offense to anybody that likes the screw in steps, but to me, this is a superior option um, because you just wrap the strap around the tree, you position these where you want them, and they're good to go. You can see with it being bundled up like this, it can't make any noise. Even when you unroll it, these you can see the they wore off the back. These have gotten me through. I've been hunting with these since about Christmas. Um, even when you take them out, they don't make a lot of noise. You space them out, and you give them room to clank. They still just they just don't make a lot of noise. If you're careful with them, there's no reason for this to make any noise. You can put this if you want in a jacket pocket. All my stuff. If I don't want to bring my backpack, I can climb without my backpack. I can climb without the stump pouch. Just my gear is very light, very compact. This OCB buckle is very quick and easy to set. Um, as far as where you can get these, the bolts, you can get them from Brock West Composites. This drill, an easy cut. You can type in easy cut hand drill. You can find these. This is, I think, 60 bucks. The new tree hopper drill is a little more. I think it's about 80. Um, I'll leave a link to that too because I do hope to eventually go to the new tree hopper drill. These are from DoubleSteps.com. Um, I believe they're $25 a piece, so you're looking at $125 plus the cost of your strap and your OCB buckle. This is an Emmy boat buckle. If you can't order these, I think right now there's a bit of a shortage on them, but you should be able to go to your local Walmart, Academy, Bass Pro, whatever, anywhere that sells marine equipment. These are like transom and tie-down strap buckles. Uh, pretty much every sporting goods store in my neck of the woods has them. If you go to Amazon right now, the saddlehunter.com effect is in full swing and they're kind of hard to find. Uh, but you see that's a very small buckle. Um, I have done a video showing how stable they are for me on a tree with the way I hunt. I can get these rock solid. Uh, they're very quiet. They don't move or squeak. If I set them and bow up on that OCB buckle, it's very quick, quiet to set up. I walk around the tree just to make sure to set them good um, and then hunting off of them they're good um, that spike I killed this past weekend I was sitting on these and I shot him I had to kind of swing around and shoot behind me to get him because when he walked in front of me he was only five yards away and I couldn't really get away with moving uh, so so when I shot him he was maybe 15 yards away and I had to move these didn't make any sound these are excellent steps so I'll usually set these um, then the only thing left to do is to set my tether. Now this is new. This is kind of experimental. Previously I used a HSS rope like it's on my linemans and I used a uh, rope in one. Pretty standard. You can use a prusik if you want. This is my tether. This is one inch tubular nylon uh, just like my bridge. It's got that same water knot tied in it. Big, nice, friendly loop. And you just girth hitch it around the tree. Okay. Now this stuff's rated for about 4,000 pounds. It's small, um, but it's fairly tough stuff. It's made for climbing. It's nylon, so it's got a little bit of, you know, kind of some dynamic rope properties to it. It's got a little stretch to it, which is weird when you're sitting on it at first to feel your tether stretch. And, uh, but I've, I've played with it. I've run the numbers on it. I feel comfortable with it. It's about 18 kilonewtons or 4,000 pounds. And then, the newest piece of gear, it's gonna be kind of hard to film, is this buckle. This is an Austro Alpen buckle, rated for 18 kilonewtons, um, which is lower than what the, the standard is. The standard right now is kind of 23 newtons. That's that's 23 kilonewtons. That's borrowed from the rock climbing and I think the arborist industry. This is a little lighter. Still 4,000 pounds and I weigh 200. I don't run a lot of slack in my system. Um, I feel very very comfortable with this setup and the nice thing about tubulars it's very cheap so this is easy to replace when it starts to work but when I get up in the tree and I girth hitch it all I do this buckle with this D-ring is permanently attached to my bridge all that I do is just thread this through and come back and then that's tight I 
can adjust it either way. It's not quite as easy as a ropeman, uh, but when I get settled in the tree, I do not really move around a whole lot. Um, I tend to find a comfortable position and I stay with it. Um, I'm still working on the best way to silence this. That slider bar does have a little bit of noise. Um, I'm not super worried about it. But yeah, that's very, very quick and easy to undo. Uh, you guys that have helped me with that system, you know who you are. I thank you very much because my tether, if you weigh this, this is I don't know, maybe nine foot of tubular web and it weighs four ounces. Uh, my tether weighs about half a pound, um, which is pretty slick. And then you can see what it packs up to again. And that just kind of speaks for itself. Um, so when I get ready to climb down, I'll put my lineman's belt back around the tree. I'll cinch it up good. Um, I'll go ahead and step down off my ring of steps into my last carbon fiber bolt that I set. I'll unhitch this. It goes back in my dump pouch. I climb down to where I can get to my ring of steps and undo it. It goes back in the dump pouch. Um, I climb down, I get to the base of the tree, I've lowered obviously, um, before I start all this, you know, I take my gear hitch and I put it back in the pocket. Um, I lower my weapon down with my doors. That takes less than a minute to do both of those things. To put my pack on, to lower my weapon and to take my gear hoist off, it takes about a minute, maybe two minutes if my fingers are cold and I'm trying to be quiet. Um, if I'm ready to leave, it takes a minute. Um, this is clipped, like I said, on my backpack strap. So I just, you know, I climb down. As I'm climbing down, I'm putting these bolts back in this this uh, cartridge holder. And I get to the bottom. My drill is usually already in my backpack by then. I'm done. Once I've climbed with it, I forgot to mention that it goes from being in my pants pocket or jacket pocket. It just goes back in the backpack for the next hunt. But uh, so this is going to go back in my backpack. This I'm just going to go right here. I get to the base of the tree, I put my lineman's belt back on, I cinch this bag shut with the little elastic drawstring. I'm done. Everything's packed up. I'm ready to go. So that's the big advantage of this system, the way I've got it set up, is that I can walk up to the tree. I don't have to rummage in a backpack for anything. I don't have to unstrap any sticks. I don't have to get my ropes right and untangled with my wild edge steps. You guys that use them know what I'm talking about. I don't have to rummage, I don't have to fumble, I don't have to make no noise. I can walk up to a tree, say, okay, I wanna climb that one. Reach in my pocket, grab my drill, and I can start going. And my feet are up off the ground. Within a minute, um, I'm already starting up the tree. So I don't have what I lose in speed using the easy cut drill. I'm making up for that just by having a very streamlined gear system. Um, something I do wanna point out, just as far as little knickknacks, I do use Arc'teryx knee pads. Yes, they are worth the money. Um, well, actually, no, they're not worth the money, but they are about the nicest knee pads I've found that you can get, and they do seem to hold up pretty well. These are on their second season, and uh, they're working quite nicely. And we have a very long season, too. I know three seasons doesn't sound like a long time, but I can start hog hunting in September and go all the way through to the end of April. So September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, Eight months out of the year I'm hunting. Um, and I live right on the river. If you go that way, literally, my back door, I'm pointing at it. That's my back door. You walk out the back door, I got steps down to the river, I can paddle across the river and I can legally hunt. In the state of Alabama, you just gotta be 150 yards away from a residence. So by the time I cross the river, I'm already 100 yards, I can walk 50 yards back in the woods and I can hunt deer, turkey, hogs, squirrels, ducks, whatever. Um, I'm single. Now, I'm not single. Um, I'm married with no kids, which is the next best thing. Uh, so I can hunt pretty much every weekend. Uh, I've got over 50 sits in this year, well over 50 sits, some all day hunts, some, some trips, truck camping. I use my gear pretty heavily. This is about the only hobby I have. I like to think my system is fairly well thought of. It's very minimalistic. Um, trying to think if there's anything that I need to go over. You guys definitely let me know. Leave a comment in the video. 
Um, you know, drop me, you know, I'm, I'm nutterbuster at saddlehunter.com. I'm, I'm happy to help answer questions. I do just want to stress, I'm happy to help you. I'm not doing your stuff for you. Um, do not take my word as gospel. Uh, do not do something just because I said so. Don't come to me looking for just an easy, you know, feel good answer. Yeah, man, that'll be fine. That The, the weight rating on that's fine. Um, I'm not really going to give you that. I'm going to tell you this is what I use. This is what some other people use. This is what some other people recommend. But you got to make the judgment call. Um, whether you're going to use grade 8 or titanium or carbon fiber rods to climb on. Whether you're going to use spurs, wild edge steps, sticks, whatever. You just have to make that risk risk analysis for yourself all of it's risky all of it's dangerous and some people if i hunted you know if i hunted small hundred acre parcels of property and didn't have to go in by kayak and chest wader and heck i swear i've hunted about everywhere i've gone in by boat i've gone in by bicycle i've hunted out of probably everything but a submarine and a helicopter at this point um atvs four wheelers three wheelers i've done a lot of it I've hunted hilly, you know, borderline mountainous areas, foothills of the Appalachians, climbing up rock slopes. I do a lot of hunting in swamps, very, very thick terrain. Um, a lot of times I'm out all day and I'll hunt two separate trees and prep them. This is a good system. Another thing I failed to mention, but I've covered in some other videos and it's been talked about ad nauseum, is that once you drill a tree, as long as you do it late enough in the year, it's good for the season. And then your second hunt, if you hunt an area and you like it and you want to go back to it, it takes you maybe five minutes to get up a tree versus it usually averages me about 15 or 20. Um, if I'm being honest from the time I say that's what I want to climb to the time I'm, you know, settled in and kind of fine tuning my tether and adjusting where my bow is. Um, well, it does take a little longer. Um, it doesn't really take that much longer than using sticks. I'm actually at this point, uh, it's very quick because drilling the holes is a very repetitive movement um so it's something that's really easy to build muscle memory in and like i said it's very safe um it is a lot of this but there's not a lot of jumping up on steps it doesn't take a lot of core strength it doesn't take a lot of a lot of finesse it's just very easy it's kind of like just climbing up a ladder once you get the hole drilled um you know, I do, like I said, I place a big emphasis on compactness, ease of use, and lightweight because um, I hunt, for me, a small tract of land is 300 acres. Uh, my 120-acre lease feels absolutely just minuscule. I feel like if you hunt it five times in a year, you've just about overhunted it. Um, I, I try not to hunt it until January when our hunting gets good. Um, the deer that you see on the wall in the background... See that little buck up top? Knife. All them deer come out of the last half of January, February. Our season early on, our rut doesn't hit into the very tail end. I try to save that little spot. But uh, anyway, small piece of property is 300 acres for me. Out my back door, I got 250,000 acres. I like to stick and move. Um, I've always got new areas to hunt. If I burn one up, I can go hunt another parcel. Go hunt another island. Go hunt on another riverbank somewhere. So I bounce around a lot. Um, and I do a lot of hunts where you hunt in the morning, you climb down in the afternoon, you take a couple of hours to scout, and then you might set up on a different tree. You might set up on a hot feed tree, a hot river crossing you've never seen before. Maybe you jump a deer. Um, I do that fairly common. If I'm out walking around and I jump one deer, I will try to quietly set up there. Because um, you never know. Chances are if you jumped one deer and you heard a run off and blow, chances are there's another deer very close to there that maybe you, maybe you just bumped them. Um, or maybe, maybe you didn't even spook them, you know, they might still be bedded there. Um, that deer that you spooked, it might be back. If you found a bedding area, you might as well go ahead and hunt it that evening. Um, so I do a lot of that, so I do place a big emphasis on being mobile. Um, I do place a, a emphasis on being able to hunt. My goal, moving to a saddle, and I think a lot of people's goal, is to have a system where... Your gear does not dictate where you hunt at all. Um, back when I hunted with a hand climber, um, or go back before that, back when I hunted with a steel climber when I was in college, in high school, and a kid growing up, I'd hunt anywhere with a steel climber for the first few months of the season. Um, and then it starts to wear you down, you start hunting closer and closer to the trucks. So over a course of a three-day weekend, you might be gung-ho on the first hunt, second hunt, third hunt, Fourth, fifth, and sixth, 
they're getting tired. Uh, none of us are Superman. I'm young and in good shape, but I, I have no shame in admitting I can't hunt 100%, you know, balls to the wall, so to speak, all the time. Um, you know, I do, I do have some responsibilities here at the house and at work and with my family, some stuff I have to do. I don't always get a full eight hours worth of sleep every night. Sometimes it's cold, sometimes it's hot, sometimes it's rainy, sometimes I'm sick. Uh, toting them 40 pound climbers through the woods just wears on you and it means that even though you know there's a really good spot a mile back through the marsh in knee deep mud, you just don't do it. Uh, with a saddle, with a, with a, you know, five and a half pound, my, my system right now is about five and a half pounds. There's no excuse not to hunt them places far back there. If I can walk there in the summer scouting, it requires practically zero extra effort to get there during hunting, hunting season. Um, and it just makes a lot of sense to do that. I think that a lot of people kind of miss the point with saddle hunting. This is just me personally rambling. The gear review's over. If you're done, you can tune out and you won't hurt my feelings. Um, I do think some people kind of miss the point saddle hunting when you start carrying a three pound platform and 10 pounds worth of sticks and then a five pound JX3 Guido's web, something like that. You know, if you're carrying a 20, 25 pound saddle hunting rig, if you're carrying a liter of water with you on hunt, if you're carrying three different grunt tubes and binoculars and a self-filming rig and stuff like that, that's fine. Um, if you want to hunt out of a shooting house, if you want to dog hunt, if you want to gun hunt, rifle hunt, heck, I don't care if you're blowing up, blowing up Tannerite. Um, and I, and I'm, I'm being very serious. How you hunt, that's up to you. You know, it's like the shoes that you wear or the beer that you drank. It doesn't affect me at all. I think you're kind of missing the point. Um, I think that I've kind of evolved towards a very ultralight minimalistic system. I carry the bare amount of gear necessary to get me through the woods all day. Um, because that lets me stick and move, light, fast, mobile, um, and easy. You know, that, that's something that's kind of a dirty word, hunting, especially people that are hunting public land, but I do want to make, I do this to make my hunting as easy as possible. It's easier to carry five pounds worth of gear um, that fits in your pockets. It just makes life more pleasant. You know, you got more time to stop, smell the flowers, you can walk a little bit further. Um, and some days I might take all this stuff, I might not even climb. Um, I may sit in my saddle on the ground. Um, if I'm hog hunting, I may never set up, period. I may stay on my foot moving the whole time, just follow an edge of a riverbank or a marsh. And, uh, you know, it's just not a big deal. Um, you know, I can take it in a backpack or a kayak, and it's, it, it just doesn't take any effort on my part to bring my whole kit where I'm ready to hunt anywhere from ground level to 30 foot up in a tree. Um, and I can do it again and again and again. I can sit fairly comfortably. Um, you know, not as comfortably as in a summit, but then I'm not, you know, if I want to be comfortable, I'd stay on the house and watch TV and run my air conditioner. Uh, you know, drink a little drink, listen to a little music, eat a little barbecue. Uh, you don't go to the woods to be comfortable. You go there to kill deer. This setup that I have, it's tailor-made for killing deer. That's my whole system. That's all that it exists to do. Anything that ain't killing deer, I don't have room for it. Um, one more little thing I want to talk about, because I said I'd mention the pack. So, this is a tactical tailor, something like Fast Fight or something pack. I'll, I'll try to include a link to it. But something I like about it, it's very light. It makes a little noise. I've washed it a few times and it quiets down. If you could replicate this in place, that would be awesome. But pack down flat, you can sit there and you can fold it up. And it clips out of your way. Um, so then, you know, you're looking at my saddle. Not very big at all. Lyman's belt. Cool, cool piece of kit. At some point, I want to do just a pocket built into the back side of the Kestrel because I don't need all the room that's in that dump pouch and I don't like how far that dump pouch sits from your body and how it kind of sags and bumps your butt a little bit. It doesn't make my saddle ride down. It's fine. Um, I've walked over a mile in it. I've walked, I haven't walked a lot in it, but I've walked enough that I can tell you it's not going to end up bothering me. It's just not. If you can walk a mile in it and it doesn't shift and you don't have to readjust it, you can walk five miles with it. Um, 
I'm trying to think if there's anything I didn't cover. Um, that's about it, I guess. I guess about the only thing I could talk about. If y'all are interested, if you enjoyed this video, if you sat through an hour of some redneck rambling, um, drinking a little Jack Daniels and wishing that he had some company, uh, if you like this video, let me know. Maybe potentially start talking about maybe like my hunting truck setup and my canoe, my kayak. That's a pretty big part of how I hunt. Um, I've got some different viewpoints. I worked for three or four years in an archery shop. Um, so I've got some different views about archery rigs. Um, mainly, I think most people need to just get over themselves uh, and, and go with a more simpler go with a simpler more minimalistic approach um, I have a very bare bones archery rig that I personally find interesting if you're interested in maybe simplifying your rig and uh, not having to spend two or three thousand dollars every time you outfit your bow and having a bunch of fiddly gear that you're constantly tuning if you just like to shoot your bow and kill deer with it and you're just tired to death of fooling with sliders and range finders and micro adjusters and weighing your fletchings and, and balancing your arrows and stuff like that. Some people find it fun, and I used to when I was younger, and then you do it for a living, and you just get tired of that stuff, and you just want it to work. Uh, I just like my stuff. That's a general theme. I just like it to work. Some stuff works. 1095 tool steel works. Chevy trucks work. Um, 30 caliber bullets work. Cut on contact broadheads work. Easy cut drill it just works. Uh, you get to a certain point where the fiddling just is not fun anymore and you just want to do the hunting and the killing. Um, so let me know. In these videos, you can tell this is obviously not something that's very professional and polished, um, but I have enjoyed it. I've, I've made a few videos. I feel like maybe I've helped a couple of people. Um, like I said, I used to work in a sporting goods store. I do enjoy talking about this stuff with people. Um, there's just no money to be made doing it. So I moved on to a better career Know, so I'm, I'm happy to move forward with these videos. I'd like to do, um, I do a lot of duck hunting. I do a lot of squirrel hunting. If you're interested in how I duck hunt or squirrel hunt, let me know. I'm happy to help. Um, don't expect very professionally edited videos. Um, this is going to be, you know, fun for me and hopefully fun for you. Um, you know, just, just let me know. This is, this is fun. This might be something to do. I, I probably won't do a lot of them during the hunting season. Uh, I don't like filming. I've played with filming in the past when I was younger and I felt like it got in the way of hunting. Um, but during the off season, maybe during, you know, some scouting trips and stuff like that, not a lot of people like to go hunt with me. Uh, with the snakes and the bugs and the heat and all that. So I, I do, it, it's nice. I, I enjoy the online hunting community. Um, you know, just, just let me know if you like it. I'd, I'd be happy to make some more videos if there are some people watching them. So, anyway. And I gotta get to bed, I gotta feed the cat, shower up, and put all this hunting gear that I drug out of my closet back up so it's ready this weekend. You guys, be good. This is the end of this video.